Next thing we'll have to define which part is rigid and what part is flex. So you go to board planning mode and then we go to design define split line. Basically this will define where you're going to split your design into separate parts. So I'm going to put one over here and another split line. We'll put that over here like this. And this will now define um, the splits, let's say, in the PCB. We still, we still have to let the system know what parts are what type. So I'll call this right. Uh, this is rigid on the left side. I will not lock this one. This will be the one that will be moving. This is not locked as well. We'll put this flex. So this will be our flexible part. And then this will be a rigid part again. That can be locked. This will be uh, locked and then the other thing will go on top. So like this. In 2D you see the split lines and that's it. But in 3D what you see here is that it is indeed now a rigid flex design. So we have two rigid parts over here and then a flexible part. Now this is not the final thing that I want to go with because it seems a bit off here. So I'm going to first of all put this one a bit more in the middle. And then I'm going to modify that board. Like this. So we cut away the extras. There we are. And this is now much more um, coming close to what we need, of course. So this is a flexible part. It only has the layer two and then the bottom layer. And the cover layers are there as well. This is rigid, this is rigid. The nice thing is if you press five in Altium, what you see is that this will start moving. So we can start defining how it will bend. And maybe let's do that first. Um, so my idea would be that this has to go on the bottom. So we're going to first shift it 180 degrees. So if you select flex, what you will see is there is a bending line already defined in the board planning mode that is more logical or clear to see. So that's that bending line. I would like to shift it 180 degrees. And the radius maybe we'll put this as at three millimeters because the 1.8 is quite small that we had basically what you see is that the complete part will start bending now so again if we try this you see that we have our sensor over here the idea here is to show you what the flex rigid design design looks like not to make a finalized product but let's imagine that you have a system where there is a need indeed to have that sensor somewhere higher than the pcb maybe underneath over here you would have your battery let's go to the variant view so let's assume that your battery would be assembled together with the PCB. It is maybe soldered in here. The battery is here lying underneath. And then we want to have that sensor facing out. So that is facing your arm, let's say, or your wrist. And this Bluetooth um, modem should then be on top so that it is facing away from the body. So to increase, let's say, connectivity there as well. So what we're going to do here is to place this sensor on the bottom, the heart rate sensor together with its capacitors. We'll place that on the bottom so that if you are now going to fold this board, that sensor is now here on top. Again, we can make this part longer so that it folds uh, further away into the board um, to make it more um, logical or representing your case, let's say. But all in all, I think we already have a relatively small footprint design. If it is folded, we are looking here at something in terms of dimensions of 15 millimeters by 22 millimeters. So relatively small. Of course, if you look at the ring example, that is uh, very small. That is another case. And in that case, you would not work with the modem or with the full module. So that's it. Let's finish the routing here as well for this one. And then last thing I would like to uh, 
tackle is how we could repurpose this one. So what you now see here on the bottom is this pogo pin connector. It would be interesting that we could use it for both charging, flashing, connectivity, rather than the more bulky USB connector. What you will always see as well in wearable designs is that there is some kind of a pogo connectivity um, to the board. So we might as well use this one for that. Um, this is again just an example to show you. Uh, it will be very dependent from project to project, of course. But let's see what we can do over there. If we go into the schematics, we'll have to go here. What we certainly need is the connectivity, of course. So there's SWDIO, there's data lines to flash, there's clock lines. There's a reset pin, we need that as well, there's a ground as well. But what we see over here is that there's a 3.3 volts. This is in fact not used to flash the system. The system should power itself via the, the battery. So what we could do is alter this and we call it VUSB. It will of course not be connected to VUSB anymore, but we name it VUSB. So like that, we have that functionality in there. Then we have a data line and a clock line. There's two USB data pairs. So the question is, can we flash the system over USB or do we need this serial connectivity? The good news is for this one, we can either work with the serial connectivity or the USB connectivity. So for that, it might be a possibility to alter this line to USB, DP and DM. So that means that in this case, we can get rid of this connector. Just to show you the ID, we are not going to fully uh, implement that in here. But of course, if we import the changes, that one will go. And the solution becomes even more compact. Uh, and then also we still have that button. The question is, would we still allow it to be in there? Um, but you see that we can even get it much more compact uh, by getting rid of that USB connector, of course. Uh, we still have connectivity options with this Pogo pin connector. Um, so it becomes much smaller if we then edit the board size. We can squeeze it in to something like this. And the total area we now have, or dimensions, is 15.5 by 18.5. So it's small. It's really small. Uh, again, depending on your needs, this, this could still be too large. Um, but I think for a lot of variable designs, we can live with this. And we now have a system where there is a wrist-facing heart rate sensor. The data will come in. It's being handled by the controller. All the power management is being done here on the top layer. There is a battery squeezed underneath. And I think we have quite some area here still for a battery. We'll be looking at 100 to 150 milliamp hours would be my initial guess. And then on the bottom side, we have the option here to flash the system via USB to charge the battery over USB. Basically, uh, this can be used as some kind of a USB interfacing connector, but it's a push on connector, meaning that we have a very small footprint for the system. So that's it. This brings us to the end of this wearable design project. We designed a wearable heart rate sensor. What would only be left here is to finish the routing. Now that is relatively trivial in this example, so we're not going to do that in this video series, but we will provide the project to you. So if you want to see the project finished, you can check that out. Thanks for following this video series. I hope it was interesting to you and looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.